hello everyone and welcome to this video in this video we'll be looking at the second process in our pipeline which is data validation and then the second component in tfx which is the statistics gen component so this component is um, really important and we'll get to know why um, soon so for this component we'll spend um, a bit uh, some fair amount of time looking at the outputs um, before we write in a code for this component, I just want to talk about something. So in the previous video, we set some um, environment variables, right? And um, those variables, we set those variables um, to... So we use um, Google application credentials variable for some authentication. And then also for Windows systems, we said we didn't have a home environment variable so we set one manually but if you have played with the code um, from the previous lesson you realize that anytime you restart your terminal you have to set that variable again so what I did was to create um, a .env file and then um, write those um, variables um, in the .env file so I can just copy it and then just say say set whatever and then set um that again right and then um, i'm done if you want you can add you can add the dot env file to your git ignore so that you don't sync it to your repo okay so um let's um go ahead and then write um, the code for our statistics gen if you have watched um, my previous videos on tfx you realize that this um, component is very easy to write so we don't have to do much because we already have the skeleton uh, for these things already so for statistics gen we have to do some imports so we say from tfx dot component import statistics gen right so i'm going to save that and then you have the documentation here and then um statistics gen is very easy to use so i'm just going to say statistics gen is equal to statistics gen and then we have examples so it's example gen dot outputs examples and then i'll just say components dot append statistics gen and that is it that's all for statistics gen so let me go ahead and then um, run this pipeline so i'm just going to use the app key so yeah and then click enter and let's just wait for this um, pipeline to finish running so um it's run but then it said um, pipeline salary prediction already exists so which means that um, the, the new pipeline we created will not override the old one so let's do something so um, in my kubeflow um, dagrana.py I'm going to add a unique um, ID to every pipeline I create so I'm just gonna say import time and then I'll say um i'll just say suffix and time dot time so this is just gonna um get the the unix um, timestamp and then i'm just gonna append that unix um timestamp to my pipeline name so let me use string formatting here and then i'm just gonna say suffix right so hopefully this will not give any errors 
and then let me just run let me just clear this run this pipeline again and yeah we have our pipeline created so we have um this um unix timestamp added so it increases so um whenever we look at our qflow pipeline we know that the one with the highest value is our latex the latest pipeline that we just uploaded so let's just go back to our um kubeflow um dashboard and then you have salary prediction here so if i look at the graph you have example gen and statistics gen so let me create a run And then let me just start this run. Yeah. So we have our um, other um, run also there. So this is just going to take a while. So I'll come back um, when um, this is done. All right. So um, the statistician components has finished running. So let's look at um we've already looked at the artifacts for this one so let's go ahead and look at the artifacts for um this one and you have um the output artifacts here not really and um, this is not what i'm looking for um ml metadata Yes, so um, you have the output artifacts for this one. So you can see that if you go to your cloud storage, you can see this, that this folder has been created and that it contains the, the, um, some files, which is the output artifact for the statistics gen. And then you can also see the output artifacts for example gen and then um, some other um, you can also see the events that were created as um, this was running and then it also has the tax id over here and then the duration so how, how long it just took 18 seconds to run this when we started and when we finished so this some of these metrics are good to know when you when you want to have a greater um, look at your your components the most important um I won't say them, but one of the most important tabs is the visualizations for statistics gen. The visualization is really, really important. And this makes it one of the reasons why this is a very important component in our pipeline. So I'm just going to um, pop this out and let's just have a look at um, what we have here. I don't think I can make it um, any bigger anyway. Yes. Um, so if you look at um, the if you look at what I have here okay I think I can do that all right so if you look at what I have here um, I have my numeric features so this is the statistics of my data set I have my numeric features and then I have my category of my categorical features. So the numeric features, I have things like age. Um, we have 6,528 um, examples. And then we have, um, we don't have any missing. We have the mean standard deviation. We don't have any zeros. You can see the mean, the median, and then the maximum, right? So this is the distribution of the age feature. And for capital gain also, we see that we have a lot of zeros for capital gain, right? So then we can decide whether to remove this feature or not, because if we have a, a lot of zeros, then it's not really, um, it doesn't really ha um, give much information when we use it in our model, right? So we can remove this um, capital gain 
and then capital loss. So we can see that it also has 6,528 samples. And then we have um, the number of years in education. So um, we don't have any zeros um, missing. We don't have any missing data. And then we have the mean and then the standard deviation and then the minimum number of years in education and then the maximum also. All right. And then we have this variable, this FNL width, so final width. So actually every sample, every, every um, row in our data set represents a sample of the population, right? So you'd have um, a, a row where the age is 54, the number of years is six, number of um, education num is maybe five, Capital gain is probably 1,000. Hours per work is maybe 25. And that does not just represent one person. That represent, those statistics apply to a group of people. So the final weight is the number of people that that um, feature corresponds to, right? So looking at all the other variables, the number of people that have the same characteristics, that's um, the the FN final weight. That's why you have like 1.13 million and um, 14,900. That's why you have large values here, right? Hours per week is hours per week. So the number of hours um, they work every week, right? So obviously maybe people who um, spend more hours at work might probably earn more. I don't know. But yeah, and then we have label. So label is um, whether the person earns $50,000 or more or whether the person earns less than $50,000. Here we can see that we have a very unbalanced data set because 75% um, of the data corresponds to people who earn less than $50,000. So we might have to... Um, do something when we get to um, the training process. So when we might have to do some um, reweighting or, or add, use some uh, unbalanced data training techniques so that we, our, our results would be better. So these are just for numerical features. So when we come to pre-processing, so what are the things that we can um, do for numerical features. We know that machine learning models like um, features that are in a certain range, right? So we can't output, we can't put um, this feature, especially when you have education um, between 1 and 16 and then um, final weight between 14,900 and then 1.13. If we do that, the model might think final weight is more important than um, number of education when probably that's not true because people who probably go to grad school might earn more than somebody who doesn't right so yeah so we might have to scale this data we will scale the, um, the numerical features between zero and one maybe we might bucketize the age um, into different bins we will see how we will do that and then um, categorical features. So categorical features, um, so you have education and then you have unique. The top is high school grad. So most of the people um, in this data set are high school grads, right? Uh, marital status, so most of the people in this data set are married um, and they have a spouse and native country so obviously because it's a u.s census data most of them would have a native country of united states there are others that um, so you, you can also show the raw data so you have um, united states mexico philippines um, germany india south nothing cuba vietnam right and also this one you can also show the raw data so married, never married, divorced, widowed, 
married spouse absence i don't know what this means so if you can also look at um, the data and then look at what the meaning of all these variables are education high school college bachelor's master's um, and then doctorate preschool yeah and then occupation so these are all the other occupations that um, are also existing and then we have race so white black asian pacific um, other relationship husband wife sex whether male or female the working class whether private or federal government so for categorical features we know that for machine learning you have to one hot encode categorical features right and then you have to scale the numerical features so so it's it's good so the statistics gen um, data set gives you um this insight on what you should um how you should go about these um, and then automatically detects which of the features are numerical and which of the features are categorical so when we go to um, when you come to data pre-processing, we would one hot encode all these categorical features and then we will scale all these numerical features between zero and one. And then you you'd see how you can use TensorFlow for this um, pre-processing. So um, that is all for statistics gen. I don't think I have anything else to add, but try and then um, work look at other things you can um, do and other insights you can draw from this um, data and you can also replace it with your own data set and then try and then see um, what you can do and one more thing um, tfx works um, under the hood with apache beam so it can work on really really large data sets so if you have a really large data set in multiple files, try and upload it to um, the cloud, your storage bucket, run the pipeline and see what happens. Look at the um, pipeline artifacts. Look at how long it took to run the output artifacts. And, and yeah, all those things just play around with Qflow and see what you, you, you would get. So um, this is all for this um, lesson and I will see you in the next lesson when we'll talk about our other next components. So see you in the next video.